This is a presentation on management of chondral defects with cardiform. I'm Dr. James Chen from San Francisco. I have a case of a 28-year-old female former competitive soccer player. She has a history of bilateral BTP ACL reconstructions. I had performed a revision ACL reconstruction with allograft to her right knee. I had also performed a loose body removal to her left knee. At the time of that loose body removal, I encountered and measured a known cartilage lesion in her lateral femoral condyle approximately one and a half by one and a half centimeters, a grade four lesion. Here's her MRI in multiple views showing a large chondral defect of the lateral side. You can see on the coronal view, she already has some osteophytic spurring uh, of the lateral femoral condyle. And so we discussed treatment options. This is a tough case. It's a 28 year old who still runs and plays sports, but not soccer. She has lateral sided knee pain. Uh, we discussed further non-surgical versus surgical treatment. Uh, she wanted something done. She was actually uh, requesting a, a partial arthroplasty because of the pain and discomfort. She just wanted to, to get it done with. Uh, in my hands, a 28-year-old cannot get an arthroplasty, and so I offered her some other options. I reviewed the imaging with the patient. She had a grade four lateral femoral chondral lesion that measured 1.5 by 1.5 centimeters at the diagnostic arthroscopy. Uh, Given her age and activity level, uh, we looked uh, at treatment options. I discussed biocartilage with her. Uh, I felt that this lesion was too large for biocartilage. I also discussed oats with her. Uh, I discussed that this lesion was also too large for an oats. My ideal lesion for an oats is an ice pick type lesion, uh, oval shaped that will be one or two plugs, uh, approximately eight to 10 millimeters. Uh, so this lesion is too large for an oats. Uh, another option would be a bio-uni oats. Uh, and, uh, that is a reasonable option. I felt that a 28-year-old, uh, I did not want to core out all that bone and put the bow uni in. Uh, my thinking was that a cardiform would be a good option for her uh, and that if it failed, a bow uni would be the next procedure. Cardiform is an osteochondral allograft uh, and it works because it ha creates a scaffold uh, onto which cells can adhere and it has a thin layer of bone that can heal down uh, to the lesion site. So here's diagnostic arthroscopy at the surgery, and you can see she has a intact ACL. I'm sweeping into the lateral compartment. You can see a very broad lateral chondral lesion, a grade four exposed bone. She has some cartilage uh, medially on that condyle, but laterally, I mean, this is a, a bad lesion and difficult lesion to have uh, in a 28-year-old active patient. She does not have a kissing lesion on the tibia, which makes her a good surgical candidate, nor does she have uh, any meniscus tear. Here are additional intraoperative images showing that broad grade four lesion down to bone, and you can see well-preserved uh, tibial cartilage. This is the arthrotomy, and I made this simply by extending the anterolateral portal, and I usually make it as long as needed to visualize the lesion. I then use a ruler to measure the lesion, and this one measures approximately 1.5 by 1.5 centimeters, superior to inferior and medial to lateral. And then here's a close-up view of the actual lesion. It's not perfectly circular uh, or oval. However, I am going to use a ring curette to sharply create a border between the normal cartilage and the bone. Here are images showing that recessed lesion. And so you want to have a nice recessed area so that the cartiform disc can sit flush with the normal cartilage. If you fail to do that, then you're going to get a prominent disc of cartiform uh, that will have too much friction and potentially could pull out. Here's the actual cartiform. Uh, it comes frozen and it takes about five minutes to thaw. On the back table, it's actually very thick and durable and it has a bony layer uh, and is very strong. And so then we go to trial size the disc. One way to size a disc is to trace out on a sterile piece of paper the disc size and then place it in the lesion and then whittle it down and cut it down to size and then cut the cartiform disc down to size. I typically just place the cartiform disc in the lesion and then whittle the disc down and cut it down to size. Here's a video of, uh, of the trialing. And you can see I'm gonna slightly extend and flex the knee. And you can see that this is a good match of the cartiform to the lesion. And here are interoperative images of me placing the cartiform in. First, you place a central knotless suture tack. So I've drilled the pilot hole. I choose a knotless suture tack because it allows me to weave the suture in the central portion of the cardiform and then reduce the cardiform down to the lesion without any prominent knots. 
And so here I have drilled the pilot holes for the push locks. You can do this in any configuration, but I've chosen uh, four corners, north, south, east, west. And then if you look to the picture to the right, you can see I placed a vicral suture at each corresponding location. And you want to place these at least one hole in from the periphery. Those sutures are going to get reduced into a push lock down into the pilot holes and reduce the whole cardiform down into the lesion. And so you can see here, I'm reducing the cardiform to the lesion. I'm pulling on that central knotless suture tack, reducing it down. Before it gets reduced completely, I place the push locks in at the four corners. And here's intraoperative imaging showing the final product. The cardiform allograft has been implanted. It's flushed down to the normal cartilage rim. You can see the central suture tack and then the four corners of push locks, very nicely reduced. And here's me ranging the knee after it's been placed. You can see it's flush and not proud. There's no dimpling or kinking of the graft. So why use cardiform? It's a cryopreserved osteochondral allograft. It retains endogenous chondrocytes, extracellular matrix, and growth factors. It's prorated, meaning it's porous, it's flexible, it's strong, and it's thick. If you haven't played with it on the back table and thrown sutures to it, it's very durable. And it serves as a scaphoid for chondrocytes, which fill those pores. What are some technical pearls? As I mentioned previously, you want to make sure you recess that bony surface adequately so the cardiform is flushed to normal cartilage. There needs to be a recess so that you can place it and sink it down. I utilize a knotless suture anchor centrally so that I can reduce it without any knots. And then I place sutures around the periphery, at least one hole in from the periphery to avoid pull out of the suture from the cardiform. Thank you very much.